unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Romans 8, 14. Amplify it for me. I need to explain something here. Let's read one. Let's go. Uh -huh. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are what? Sons of God. Read again. For all who are led by the Spirit of God, so are they, sons of God. Read it again. Mm. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Sons means offspring, children of God, right? So don't say, sons, what about means of God? No. It's offspring, really. Okay? Next verse. For, listen, uh -huh, let's go. The Spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. Read it again. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you... Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But you've received the spirit of adoption. Uh -huh. The spirit, listen, producing sonship in the bliss of which you cry Abba Father in the bliss of which you cry Abba Father that's why I was looking for the amplification let me show you the difference between amplification and the KJV you know the KJV are the same verse 15 you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father now when the Bible says we cry Abba Father it sometimes gives an impression of a desperate soul trying to reach out to God Father you understand that's the impression many Christians get. He says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, when you read that, the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, when you read the word cry, okay, many people think that going to God is a place where you take your problems and say, God, you see me here, everything that I've been through. You understand? And then they weep, cry on the Lord. He shall answer, ah! Then the Christian starts to cry because you think that God is melted by your cry. Let me tell you, I tell people, God is not sentimental with ignorant people. Because he seeks that you may know him. This is eternal life. That you may know the one true God and his only son, Jesus. I'm going to show you the right way to pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, before we go there, okay, I want us to first note the first thing here. Okay? When you read the amplification, it says that the spirit producing sonship. And the Bible says, in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father. In the bliss. What is the name of bliss? A state of extreme happiness. That's bliss. Do you hear that? We don't say, Father, Father. No. We say, Father, with joy. Are you with me? So the Bible says that the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father. In the extreme excitement. Do you know the feeling of a child screaming, Dad, because they're excited? They know they have to get results. They know they have to get results. They know they have to get answers. They know it has to work. They know they have to get what they ask for. That is the bliss by which we approach the Father. We don't approach the Father in disarray. We don't approach the Father in frustration and, and devastation. Any man who goes to the Father heart and frustrated doesn't know the Father, doesn't understand the spirit that produces sonship. They don't understand this. Look at earthly parents. You've heard of parents saying statements like, you'll never understand until you have a child of your own. You know why they say that? Because their child can be sick and they feel like they are more sick than their child. Do you understand? No parent can stand the pain of seeing his child weep. No parent. In pain, in agony, 
no parent. That is why many people, when you're in hospitals and they're treating sick people, you realize every parent would wish they took the place of their child. You think they want disease on them? No, they don't want disease on them. But no parent wants to see their child suffer. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Bliss. Perfect happiness. A state of spiritual blessedness. You understand? A state of perfect happiness. Spiritual blessedness. That's how we go to the Father. I go with spiritual blessedness. I go in perfect joy. I enter the presence of God in perfect joy. That's why we go with thanksgiving. Are you with me? So the question then is how or why do we go that way? Don't we have trials? Don't we have situations? Don't we have circumstances? Yes, we do. You see, a man can fail to receive because of the way he has gone to the Father, the state of the heart that has gone to the Father. You're dealing with Jehovah God. Okay, let's go back from the beginning. Probably let's begin with the 15th verse where it was in the Amplified. Why don't you let's go. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. You know, for a moment think, how do slaves think when they're dealing with their masters? How do slaves think? They go with fear. Will he hear me? Will he respond to me? Will he answer me? You guys, for example, those of you who have maids when you're growing up, you remember? And the maid wants to ask your father or your mother for them to go to the village because they've been working the whole year. Now the spirit of slavery in them knows that you're going to ask somebody to grant you a liberty which you don't have authority to have. Do you understand what I'm saying? The guy works for six, five months, and then at a particular point he wants to go. But see how he approaches the boss. You understand like this. So, I was asking whether, but in his heart he's praying. I pray he allows, because if he refuses, you're not going to go, or else you lose the job. That's what they call the spirit of slavery. You understand? But no parent can fire their son. I've heard it in African culture where a man says, from today you're not my son. Listen, you can't get DNA out. You can't. Okay, change my nose too and it stops to look like yours. You can't. It's practically impossible. You can refuse to talk to your son, but you can't say you're no longer my child. It's a speech of your mind. They then change it. You're the one who brought me in this world. I didn't ask you. Come on, somebody, help me here. Even some children wish they are not their father's son. But you can't change it. You're your father's son. Maybe you wanted to be born in Bill Gates' family. <laughs> but there's a reason why God wanted you to be raised in that family. He knew that that DNA is the one he needed. Don't ever wish to be another man. <laughs> Hallelujah. But now let's go back to the slavery thing. He says, for the spirit which you've now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. Are you hearing me? You know, the place of bondage to fear, the place of bondage to fear, the place where men are bound in the spirit of fear is when they approach as slaves because they don't know what to expect when they ask. And that's how the world deals with people. Remember, the spirit of fear is not of God. Remember, the Bible says you've not received the spirit of fear, but the spirit of sound mind, power, and love. You understand? Why? Because the Bible says, because fear has torment. That's why. Fear has torment. That's why people shouldn't fear. Because fear, the Bible says, has torment. Really amplifies. The Amplifier says, for there is no fear. Uh -huh, read. In love, dread does not exist. Listen. But full-grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out of doors and expels every trace of terror. Listen. For fear brings with it the thought of punishment and so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love it is not yet grown into love's complete perfection there is an expectation or even thought of punishment some will go to god with that mind are you hearing me maybe god might not listen fear has torment it has torment what you fear you attract hallelujah the bible is very clear read it Fear brings with it the thought of punishment. The thought. And remember the book of Proverbs says, As a man thinketh, so is he. 
Okay? But the Bible says, fear brings the sort of punishment. And so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love and is not yet grown into love's complete perfection. Now some people, they still carry the mentality of slaves when they go to Jehovah God. Why? Because they go with fear. They go with worry. Will he hear my prayer? Is it in line with his wants? Does he want it? Does he feel it? Oh God, okay, let me just go and try. Father, I come to you. You understand? But you are thinking punishment. You are attracting punishment. Therefore, for the thing that you greatly fear comes upon you. Now, here you don't blame God. No, you blame yourself. Because you don't know the principle by which we approach the Father. Hallelujah. Now, when he goes to the place where he speaks of the Spirit, whom you have now received, now, now, when you became born again, the Bible says, it's not the spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. In the bondage of thinking, I might not get this answer, I might not get it this way, it might not work that way. When you're going to God, don't go with that mentality. Because God doesn't deal with you as a slave. The Bible says that, but you have received the spirit of adoption. Listen, the spirit, listen, the Bible says, producing sonship in the what? In the bliss of which you cry. In the joy. The word bliss there is the perfect joy. In the perfect happiness of which you cry out the Father. In other words, when you go to the Father, you go happy, regardless of the situation that is surrounding you. No. You go in laughter to approach the throne of God. Are you hearing me? He says that spirit producing sonship it is in the bliss of which you cry. In the perfect joy of which you cry. In the perfect happiness of which you cry. In the spiritual blessedness in which you cry. In other words, I go to him with the knowledge that I'm a son. I'm a daughter of the Most High. I'm not going like a slave. Ah. You see, let me explain why it's that way. You see, some people say, oh, that's pride. No, it's not pride. You just don't understand that without faith it is impossible to please God. God has only given us one responsibility of boasting, and that is in the faith. He says, for where is our boasting, seven? Faith. God expects a certain line of boasting when you believe his word. The efficacy of his word, of which it is impossible for God to lie. Now, the Bible says, let's go back. He says, this spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which you cry, in the happiness of which you cry. So you ask yourself, so why do we go happy? Why do we go happy? Why? Because we're not slaves. We're sons. What is the implication of being sons and daughters? Next verse. What does it say? Uh -huh. The spirit, listen, himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are children of God. Now listen to the next verse. Next verse says, And if we are his offspring, then we are his heirs also. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his sufferings if we are to share his glory. That's the only difference. He has not removed glory from you. He only says, the one thing that gives you the bliss to go is simple. You are an heir. An heir means that you share in the lot. You carry a portion in the heavens. You don't get into the bank and worry that you're going to fail to withdraw 10 million off your 100 million account. Have I made sense? Because it's your lot. It's your lot. Can I say it again? When you have 100 million dollars in the account, you don't plead with a banker to give you 10 million. You don't go weeping. Why? Because you're the heir. It's your portion. It's looted to you. It's yours. No. You simply go sign a check and say, I want this. Listen, this might sound indifferent to men who don't understand the mind of pureness. Because to them which are pure, all things are pure. But a man which is defiled and unbelieving might misunderstand what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. God has no right to hold back what he apportioned for you. Because it's not in his mind to hold back what he has given. That's not him. The giftings and callings of God are without repentance. Don't ever be mistaken about that. I told people one time, they think that God is like their little small nephew or niece at home. I'm not your friend, I'm not your friend, give me back my phone, I'm even not your friend. Even the things I gave you last time, give them back to me. Even this bag, it's not yours anymore. And if you don't talk to me well, I'll even take away your shoes. I'm the Lord that giveth, and I'm the Lord that taketh away. No, come on! That was Job's revelation. The Lord giveth, and he taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who said that? Job. 
And later we read in the scriptures, he actually broke the hedge of himself. God was not even in the business. No. He's the one who broke the hedge of himself. But he was already blaming God. He's saying, nah, God give us and the Lord take us away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But that's contradictory. He said that my giftings and my callings are not with repentance. Can you amplify? What does he say? He says, uh-huh. For God's gifts uh-huh, and his call are, uh, uh-huh. he never withdraws them once they are given. And he does not change his mind about those to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sends his call. He doesn't. If you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly presence of Christ Jesus, understand, God has never changed his mind about that. Oh, but I'm not faithful. Yes, the Bible says, for if you're unfaithful, does that change his faithfulness? He says, for if you believe not, but lo, he abideth faithful. Why? Because this is not your faithfulness. This is his business. He says, for he cannot deny himself. But your God is too good. Okay. That's why it's the good news. Come on, somebody. That is why it's the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Listen, God is not a baby. Don't think that because you're angry, God is also angry. Or because your anger levels have a certain degree by which they are snapped. And you think God also has plugs on him. Listen, slow to anger and rich in mercy. Slow to anger and rich in mercy. And that is why the Bible speaks of an experience, the evil that we've seen on the earth, of where righteous men, the Bible says, die. Just men die in their righteousness. And wicked men prolong their lives in wickedness. Some men who are wicked know who they are. Come on. He says, all things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man which perishes in his righteousness. He's right, but he's perishing. And then you ask, oh, why do good people die early? Simple, principle. Principle. It doesn't matter how good and just you are. If you have a stupid mouth, you'll die. Because life and death are in the power of a tongue. He didn't say the power of life and the power of death. No, he says life and death are in the power of a tongue. But he says they shall eat of the fruit they're in. Even if you're righteous like how, and then you wake up in the morning and say, oh, I'm going to fail. I don't have a future. When I look at myself, I don't think I'm going to go anywhere. I swear you will die. And then there's a man who is wicked, but he can prolong his life. He can say, I'm not going to die. <laughs> he's not even quoting scripture, no. But he's eating of the fruit of his mouth. And he saw the vanity. He says, I saw a just man perishing in his righteousness. And there was a wicked man that prolonged his life in his wickedness. He's wicked, but he lives long. You're just and you die early. Oh, Apostle, I have a problem. I did the right thing the other day at my workplace and they fired me. That's okay. Let them fire you. That job is not your lot. That job is not your lot. Listen, that job is not your lot. The moment you go to God and then you lose the blissful approach by which you cry, Abba, Father. And then you go with a down face and say, God, look at me, I'm so stressed. And God is like, look at this one. I was in a plane, I was telling people, from, I was coming from KL and going to Kuching. And then I bumped into a guy, I think he was coming from New Zealand. And this boy was so white. And then he came and told me, hey, how are you doing, man? He said, I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Hey, I'm hungry. I don't have money on me. Can you please give me some little money? I want to buy something to eat. I said, oh, okay. Give him. He went to buy something. He comes back with a sandwich and some a soda. Then he gives me back my change. I said, no, 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 keep it. The gospel changed how I think. I don't look at change and I say, now my change, this change will help me buy a this. I said, no, 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 keep it. Why? I was loving it that I was blessing him. You shall learn to nation. <laughs> so, the guy said, no, 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 insist, man, take your change. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we sit down and start talking. And then we talk, and then we talk. So he asks me, what do you do? I tell him I'm a pastor. Oh, so is that all you've done? As a banker, da, da, da. And I ask him, so what do you do? He says, um, nothing. You know, like, this boy, nothing really. He says, so what do you plan to do in the future? The guy says, um, I want to join the army. I just want to join the Navy, you understand? I tell him, of all professions, 
Why army, navy? Now I'm taking my Ugandan mind. When we were growing up, we didn't want to be navy. No, who wants to die? Do you remember those days when we were in primary? Those songs they used to sing. Come and see the use of education. Oh, come and see. You remember? The use of... Then they put people in front of the line. Then somebody comes and says, I am a lawyer. I am a doctor. Of education. I am a politician. Then you have those ragged ones who don't even know anything. They say, I am a cobbler. Then you're like... 98% of Ugandan population at a particular point in their lives have either wanted to be a lawyer or a doctor. Say amen if you know what I mean. Now I'm expecting doctor. Oh, you know, and I love white people. You know why? Because even the worst job can have a good title. You understand? You can find like someone who determines who enters a park. Eh? You know like an amusement park like an ocean park or a white park. Someone who's on the door, allowing them to enter. Then he has a title like Executive Decision Something Maker Something. But really, he just allows them to enter. He makes decisions as of who enters or who doesn't. And becomes Executive Decision Maker Something. Manager. You know. So anyway, ask the guy, what do you want to be? And the guy said, Navy Police. I said, ah, you want to join the army? He says, yeah, that's my passion. So in my head, I'm thinking, this guy, his parents produced him to think like this. That's a loss. In my head, I'm thinking. So I ask him, why of all professions that? He says, I just love it. You just love it? Yeah, I just, I just love it. You know, it's, it's just this thing that comes with every man who is army. You know, it's in my country, you're respected, you understand? It's just like that. I said, oh, so that's why you love it. So I ask him, so, um, then how do you intend to, like, you know, build a future, be successful, you know, make money and all. He says, ah, I don't think I need to work. When I think of how much money my dad and mom have, I think I'll live fine. Do you? <laughs> I mean, the boy's father is too rich, but he knows if he can calculate the money, they're going to leave him. Son of man. He said, I don't think I need to work, because when I look at how much my mom and dad have, in this life I might never need to work. <laughs> In other words, he's 21, but he doesn't think about income. Building a house and buying a car. No, dad and mom made too much money. But the father had to comfort him and told him, my boy, with how much I've made, you don't need to also suffer. I got a someone. I sat on the plane and I said, I'm a child of God. Come on, you're a child of God. And there's a 21 year old who can look at the income of his father and not worry. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus, blessed be the Lord God who loadeth us with benefits. He loadeth us with benefits. God has assured you of your life. He are assured. And you still worry though they fired me. Let them fire you. The heavens didn't. Tell anybody the heavens did not fire you. And then somebody goes to that down for oh God. What am I going to do with my children? And then we go out of the country and then we start to explain. Our ministries are suffering back in Africa. We are looking for a place where we can put the orphans. No. 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 I told people a story. One time I went to a certain ministry to preach. And then a certain man of God told me, now, eh, Apostle, when you're going to preach, eh, make sure you get this amount of money from these guys. He gave me a figure. He told me, you get this amount of money because we need to run, you know. You do everything you can in your mind to get this money. Look at how Christians think. Do everything you can. And I'm thinking, man of God, hey, show me a diligent man. For he shall stand before kings and not before mean men. If your people are mean, there is something wrong with you, managa. You know what I did? I just got a pen and my check and I gave him the money he wanted to collect. And I gave it to him. I told him, so now can I preach? I just wanted him to understand that you cannot do that. You can't get to a level where you sell the gospel that way. Come on, you have a God. 
you are a believer. If it doesn't come from that door, it will come through a window. If it doesn't pass through a window, it will go down under. If it doesn't pass from under, it will break through the wall. But the blessing of God cannot be held back by anything. Just know who you are. Just know who you are. You go in the bliss. That joy of because you're a child of God, you know who you are. You must get results. The Bible says because we're heirs, that's what gives us joy. It means there is a portion we carry in God. Don't be mistaken. We just go to claim what is already given to us. And of which is given without repentance. He does not withhold back. The Bible says from him he gives. The Bible says he never withdraws them once they are given. Now, this God who gave the inheritance, imagine an inheritance like this. Blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Given everything that pertains to life and godliness. Anything you need to walk a godly life is already given by the Father. Now, there are things in this world that want to pull you and make you human. That's okay. Let them do whatever they want. You know your source and your backing. Your backing is based upon a promise of which it is impossible for the scriptures to be broken. That God who put you in this world knew that you needed backup. You needed everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything you need has been given already. Everything you need. So, when I go to God, I don't go like a disadvantaged man. God, help me. Help. No. I go with that bliss. Oh, the Father gave it. The Father gave it. I don't go like a slave. Because slaves mean you don't own anything. I don't go like a slave. No. I go like one who knows what I have. Are you hearing me? Listen, I can tell you for a fact. For a fact. It's been many years since I ever asked for anything. I just thank. I go to the presence of God and tell him, God, I thank you. Because divine health is mine. I thank you because I'm blessed. I thank you because this is coming this way. I thank you because I'm getting this in my life. I thank you because this is going to increase. I thank you. Do you understand? I premeditate everything that has to happen. And there in now I know that that is the mind which he has pertaining my life. And I, you know, in the healing meetings, I would get into my room, I say, God, I thank you. There's a lame guy walking right now. There's a blind guy I see. There's a deaf ear opening right now. There's somebody, the tumor is disappearing right now. I'm in my room. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Because it has to work. Why? Because this is to pertaining life and godliness. Do I need anything in God? It has already been given. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. The Bible says he has given it to you. You don't go to God like you're believing God. Oh, let's believe God. One time somebody came to me and told me, I'm believing God for healing. And I told him, you're going to die. How? How can I die and I'm a believer? I told him, because you're doing it the wrong way. The man who became seen, that you being there and true sins might live and true righteousness, he saved by Peter, by whose stripes you were healed. How can you believe to be what you already are? You're believing to enter into what he knows. The heavens know you're healed. Are you hearing me? He says, for his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. In other words, that man shouldn't go to God and say, I'm believing for healing. We're believing God for our healing. Come on, you can't say you're believing. Believing. You're having faith. You're believing for what you already have. Why won't you die? Because the heavens are going to say, wow, she doesn't even know she has it. She doesn't even know she has it. No, listen, when you feel sick in your body, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Wake up in the morning and say, God, I thank you. Why? Because I was healed. I was healed. This pain I'm feeling, it's a lie. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. It can't be true. Devil, you're a liar. It can't be true. It can't be true. It might increase. Say no, you can't be true. This is not you. And then somebody calls you and says, Apostle, I'm sorry, I couldn't even answer my call. The headache was too much. Listen, that's the very reason why you must answer your phone. Because the communication of your faith can only become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, which is in Christ. I can't stand a Christian who gives the excuse of I had too much headache to answer. I kept my phone off because I had too much headache. You provided for that. You provided for putting off your phone because you believed you had too much headache. Come on, somebody. You think over the years we've not been tried to? We have. 
One time I was standing on a pulpit and then this headache came and it was like somebody put a hammer in my head and said to pound me years ago. And I said, devil, you're in trouble. I said, I'm going to give headache a headache. I stood on the pulpit, unaware. And I screamed my lungs out and said, hallelujah. I felt the veins pricking out. Ah! The headache just disappeared. And I preached. I told it, come back next time. I'll scream louder. You have to get to a certain place where even the devil knows that you're crazier than him. If he brings cancer, you become cancer to cancer. If he brings, come on, come on. You understand? So that even the cancer in you says, no, I have cancer. I refuse to die young. I refuse to be weak. I refuse to be disappointed. I refuse to be depressed. I refuse. I refuse to be downcast. David wakes up and he says, why art thou done cast my soul? Why? What is wrong with you? Because David is he's putting the difference between him and the soul. He says, that's not me. You, you, what's wrong with you? Not me, you, what? Come on. Why are you describing me? What's wrong? This is not who you are. You talk to yourself. You're frustrated. You say, no, I refuse to be this. I refuse to be this. I refuse to be this. I remember days I would go frustrated and somebody annoys me. Oh, you've gone through a situation and it's too much. And then you lock yourself up in the door and you feel like you want to go before God and weep because it's too painful. And then you remember you're a child. Blissful. You understand? That approach that is blissful before God. He says, in bliss we cry. And before I know it, I have pain in my spirit. But I must carry that bliss because I carry sonship. Adoption is inside me. And before I know that, I can't fake laughter, but I carry its revelation. And what do I do? I just fake the revelation of laughter. And I say, <laughs> God, I thank you. <laughs> because I can't be defeated. <laughs> I'm faking it. But I realize that I cannot live outside the place of not faking it. Because if I fake it, I'll go with tears. And this blissful blessing of going to God with the knowledge that I'm a child. And everything I put before him must be sorted. No, I refuse to weep. And I just... Oh, <laughs> Talababa. The devil is a liar. <laughs> you force your laughter. And the next thing you know, the Holy Ghost, he helpeth. He says, we do not know how to pray as we ought. Same way. We don't know how to laugh as we ought. And what began like a fake laughter? In a few minutes, it starts to become real. You start to feel him tickle you. And then they realize that. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. And after that, you're like, oh. What happened? Then you bathe. And then your neighbors say, there's something wrong with the guy downstairs. He laughs and he screams alone and talks to himself. Listen, this gospel is foolishness to them which are perishing. But the Bible says it is life and power. You have to get to that level. Listen, don't give a damn anymore about how anybody looks at you the way you're looking like you don't look like you should look. Because nobody knows where you come from. Some of us, we almost died a few years ago. Come on, you cannot know my story if all your life you only suffered of flu and vitamin C was there. Some of us, we survived death. So if I laugh, understand. If I'm a bit crazy and out of core for you, I'm sorry, you'll understand later. This is deeper. It is deeper. It is deeper than getting a job. It is deeper than getting a promotion. No, there are the time jobs and promotions were there, but we are dying every day. And nobody in this life knew it. And then the lift of our head came. And he ministered to us in the most holy way. Never judge a man who you don't know where he comes from. Listen, some people don't know where you come from. Now, if I look back and I realize, oh, I should have been buried at 23. Now I'm alive, preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ. Growing bigger every day by reason of the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes I look at situations that come, and some of them I say, no, you're smaller. You're smaller. I've been through us. 
One time a guy came to me and scared me. You, we're going to take you away. We're going to whisk you away. And then you might never appear again. These funny things. I told the guy, do I look scared? When you look in these eyes, do I look scared? It was a guy, man. I've survived death three times. Eh? Making me disappear is a small thing. Listen, the Bible says when he died, <laughs> you died with him. Nothing in this world should threaten you. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. That spirit of sonship in Galatians 4, he's spoken about very clearly. Listen, you must know who you are in God. Begin from what? Six. He says, and because your sons, God has what? Sent forth the spirit of his son in your hearts. Crying what? Abba Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a what? A servant, but a what? But a son. And if a son, then a what? An heir of God through Christ. Every time I look, everything is in my reach. If you don't have a job, you can still get provision without a job. What makes you think that everybody's going to sit in an office? Deliver yourselves. That's colonialism. Our grandfathers before the white men came used to hunt. What I'm trying to say, in every generation, your provision will be there. You're a child of God. The job is there. Work hard. If you get a job, work hard. There are people who have tried to get jobs. They've tried everything they can do and they can fail to get it. And you think that that's it because you don't have a job. No, God is bigger than any employer. A man like Elijah can simply shut rain when he's sure. <laughs> he's the Lord's servant. The ravens will feed. You're not the Lord's servant only now. You are a son. Do you understand me? Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? There is a level where a man can go and no, no, at this level, this can't happen to me. Listen, the Bible says take heed, at least when you think you stand, you fall. Read the Bible again. When you think you stand on your own power. But them which are kept by the power of God, they can boast. Let me tell you, by God and beyond the level of believing God for food. Listen, even birds which don't soak. <laughs> Woo! Even birds which don't soak. The Bible says they're provided for. And then you worry, oh God, where will I get food? No, he says, the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Now, this is why I stand and I say, God, I'm a sower. If things which don't sow, don't worry. So when I say I'll never beg for food, I know what I mean. I'm a giver. I cannot beg for food. I'm past the level of believing God for food. I cannot believe God for food. I'm past that level. The heavens know. Even God himself knows. He says, uh-uh. Listen, every place of maturity, you have to get to a place where you understand you're growing in levels. It's like one time I woke up with a temperature many years ago, you know, and I was hot at night. And then I first got that panic that no one will get what's wrong with me. This is not me. It doesn't happen to me. And then I remembered. And I said, devil, really? Really? Do you really think I'm at this level? You see, if you don't graduate yourself out of that level, you'll never come out. I asked the devil simply, do you really think I'm at the level of feeling temperature in my body and I believe I'm sick? Some of you must understand what I'm saying. I said, but do you really think I'm at that level where temperature can come in my head and I say, ay, 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 ay. I think I'm sick, give me painkillers, I think I need to go to the hospital. No, 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 I told the devil I'm past that level. Look for another guy eh, who is in that class. I'm not in that class. You know what I did? I got the blanket on my covered myself. In the morning I was fresh like I was from running 20 kilometers. And that was it. No recurrence, no what, no nothing. That was it. The guy you know, you can't deceive this guy. The Bible says he told men, he reproved kings for your own sake and said, touch not my anointed one. God knows, the devil knows that he can't touch you. 
He knows that. He can only trick you. He can't touch you. How can you even think that you can be touched by the devil? He said a thousand shall fall at one side and a ten thousand on the other. He says, but none of those things shall in any means, they shall not in any means come near you. They can't. I am past the level of thinking that certain things can touch me. I can't think it. It's not in my head. No. He says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. And what does the next verse say? I love the Amplified. Only a spectator. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Only a spectator shall you be yourself. What? Inaccessible. In the secret place of the Most High God. As you witness the Lord deal with wickedness. You just watch. Spectator. You see God kill cancer. Yet you're inaccessible. Cancer is coming to an end. Men are going to enter glory of I've spent 20 years without sickness. I'm 90, but I don't have a disease. I'm 100, but there's not even a flu in my body. You guys are going to live so long. Hey, Amen. And you're going to be so strong. Man, I saw days where men are going to be 90 and 100, but they're in the dance groups of the church. Playing basketball at 80. My God, what's inside you? You tell him Maraba Kata, Simande, Kola, Pa, Ripe Kele Barande, Siko Tele Para. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? I've been given anything and everything that pertains to life and godliness. Anything you need to life is given. Whether it's the DNA, the vitamin necessary to keep cancer out of your body. The ingredient necessary to keep hypertension out of your blood. The ingredient needed to keep everything you've been given. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything. You're complete. Perfect. One time I was at the office and I was walking like this. And people were thinking I'm just being stubborn. I was was just remembering a lot of things. Greater is he who is in me. And the devil in the world. I mean, if a small little boy in America can walk like that because he has a gun. Listen, I don't have a gun. I have deeper than that. I have Jehovah God. Do you understand what I'm saying? I told people one time I started to worry because I was not worried. Do you know the fear? I said, Am I normal? I said, I think I have a problem. Why? I was worried that I don't get worried. What's wrong with me? Examine me. If there's anything in me you have to remove, remove it. I'm worried that I don't worry. Spirit of adoption. Spirit of sonship. Now, listen. The man who say, He that watches over you, neither sleepeth, nor slumbereth. And then you see a Christian going out of the door like this. Yeah, but you have to also be careful, you know. God watches you, but you also have to watch your back, you know. Careless. <laughs> In the care of God. So does that mean you do nothing? Yeah, do nothing. You really, seriously, you're going to do nothing? Yes. Only a spectator shall you be. <laughs> Inaccessible! <laughs> So, I go in the presence of God as a son. I don't go like a disadvantaged brother seeking for. You know, there are songs we used to sing, and they were okay. Rock of ages, pray for me. Let me hide You remember that guy? Was a man who was not yet born again. Nay, nee. that one. To the for dread, a battle 
That was an unbeliever. Now we're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Behold, the old is past and now the new. The Bible says, you put on the Lord Jesus. You're not naked anymore. No. He says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are what? Are of God. You are clothed in Christ. It was okay to sing it. When a man needs to see Jesus. Do you remember the song saying, Just as a young without one, that's how a dread was set for me. Uh-huh. And God, thou beat me come. That's God telling a man, come, come. That man is not taking the Lord. Come, come. Now you, you've come. You've come to Zion, the city of God. To the company of innumerable angels. To Jesus who is the mediator of the covenant. Whose blood speaketh better things. Than the blood of Abel. Now, don't act like you're not born again. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Listen. The man of sin in you died with the Christ. The man who is a new creature in you. Knoweth no sin. That which is born of God. Doth not. He didn't say cannot, does it? You understand? He does not commit sin. For his seed permanently remains. The Amplified calls it what? No one born or begotten of God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. For God's nature, listen, abides in him. His principle of life, the divine sperm remains permanently within him. And he cannot. That's a new creation in you. Come on. When you go to God, you have a lot. Not a lot, a lot. A portion. You have an inheritance in Christ. Everything that pertains to life and godliness is already at your exposure. Imagine somebody going to pick what's already given. How do they go? Do they go with tears? No, you don't go that way. You don't go that way. Listen, if there is water here to drink, it's my portion. They put water for a preacher. And then I come. Father, I'm thirsty. Don't you see I'm thirsty? God, remember your servant because he can forget you. Visit us today because he's not indwelling. Give us water. In Jesus' name. Amen. And then you wait. And then God said, no. Jesus laid. Listen, you will be spoiling your son if you allow them to approach you as a slave. You spoil them. The only love that speaketh truth ought to first make them understand their sons and not slaves. It's more important for him to come as a son than to come as a slave. You'd spoil him to give it to him like he's a slave because every time he's going to come like a slave. But if he's a son and he knows he's a son, he'll simply just come and say, Father, I thank you because you have held water for me to what? To drink. He said that your time of prayer He's not 20 days seeking the Lord about your husband. 16 hours of talking to God about your brother. 32 hours. No, it's entirely thanksgiving. Make thanks. Mandala baka shakata. Kori baka tani pasta. Jile brokora mandaka. Zike telepa. Kuyende yaba. Kile baka saka. Himande kosta. When you go in a nation, the moment you step in it, like sometimes every nation I step in, the moment I step my leg on the ground, boy, I say you're blessed because I came. That's how I, I pray, find favor in the land where you're sending me. <laughs> He's not a God who impregnates the woman and allows her not to bring forth. You can't give me a visa. And I get frustrated in a nation. No. I enter the moment you step on it. Even your workplace, the moment you get the job, you enter that workplace, boy, tell it you're blessed. Because I can. You will be successful. Because I want to. You understand? Everything must understand you. Some people have small shops that are drying every day. Because every time you God is saying, look. You know, in African culture, there's something we call Okusumbi Echejo. 
Umana nga asumbia. Like, umana ye kabia kabia. You know that experience? Eh? That place where you cry over nothing. Hey, anti cheche, jo bakuita kusumbia. You cry over nothing. You know that kind of thing? The other day I was with my niece. And then I was tickling her, then she cried, you will tears. And then I said, where is mommy? Then she said, mommy, your eyes, where are you? How did the emotions change? Oh, where is mommy? Oh, I don't know. I think mommy is down there. You remember when we were young? You beat your young brother. He cries about 3 p.m. And then he keeps quiet. Then at 7, your father comes back. <laughs> So, why are you crying? <laughs> they don't even ask what time up. <laughs> then you wait for the guy also next day. They beat you and you tell him tomorrow when dad goes to work, you see me. Then the next day you get the guy, huh? So, why did you cry? Now, you're not beating him for reporting you. You're beating him for crying at 7 p.m. when he stopped crying at 3. Lying vanity. <laughs> So, God looks at Christians the same way. You're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And, like, and God is like, Archangel Michael, come and see. Paul, Peter. And then Paul and Peter come. Oh my God, look at the people Jesus died for. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? And Moses is like, look, hey, Jeremiah, come. Come and see. Come and see Sister Rhoda. Come, come, Jeremiah, come. Come and see Christ. <laughs> blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And you're crying for a job. You're a slave. <laughs> you're not a son. Listen, you're blessed. God is not interested in your tears. He's interested in your knowledge. That's why you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That's why you're given everything that pertains to life and godliness through the word. Through the what? Come on. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. What does this verse say? Give me the message of that. Uh From verses 3. Read. Everything. Say again. Say again. Uh Uh-huh. That goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited us to God. The best invitation we ever had. Uh-huh. We were also given absolutely terrific promises to pass on to you. Your tickets to participation in the life of God. After you turn your back on a world corrupted by lust. So, don't lose a minute in building on what you've been given. Complementing your basic faith with good character, spiritual understanding, a lot discipline, personal passion, and reverent wonder, warm friendliness, generous love, each dimension fitting into developing the others. With these qualities active and growing in your life, no grass will grow under your feet. No day will pass without its reward as you mature in your experience. He didn't add and cry. Go into the things. The character. Go back to the qualities above there. Uh-huh. Read. Alert. Discipline. Passion. Patient. Reverent wonder. Warm friendliness. Generous love. Nothing like crying also to the Lord. It's not there. Listen. Stop. Stop. Osumia. That's why I don't bow to tears. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, 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 no. First, clean your face. You know, and that's why some women don't understand men. You understand? Am I making sense? Cry after crying, let's talk. What's really the... Finish and let's talk. What's the issue? After crying, the man will still say, uh-huh, what up? See, this is what you did. Or oh, what did I do? Still, the point is, let's... Yes, let's talk about it. Let's finish this. And after finishing, then you can cry. You can put the first things first. Talk about it and after it, cry. <laughs> That's insensitive apostle. No, but it's revelational. <laughs> Hallelujah. God didn't call us to weep. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Joy unspeakable! Full of glory. The path of the just, the Bible says, shines brighter and brighter. 
What does the message version say? It says the ways of right living people glow with light. The longer they live, the brighter they shine. I'm better this year than I was last year. I'm shining brighter. That's how I think. Tomorrow is better. Next week is deeper. I'm more anointed next year. By the time I'm old, I'm shining brightest. But sometimes they can be trials. You start your lines from there. Me, I'm not there. I would have fainted if I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Somebody speak in other tongues. Go with bliss to the Father. Now I understand why the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, peace, and the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom. That's the kingdom. You are the righteousness of God. You carry the peace that passes all understanding that guards your heart. And you have a reason to have joy. Hallelujah. I am happy when I pray. Prayer is supposed to be a place of happiness, joy. Hi, Amanda, Kali, host. Hey, more bakaya. Please do 60 seconds of joyous prayer. Makatala. Mosteke bata. More bakaya. Zonda rabaka selebu. Masta katala ba. Robo kote. Osi batala. Robo kote kesete. Zoba katene. Maranda kaya, kosa kala. Oh, mateleba. I'm happy, happy. Mateleba, robo seleba. Soma katala, kosi lebara. Riba zakatele, choko bara laba. In the bliss, we cry out the Father. In joy, in perfect happiness, we talk to the Father. Mata katala ba. Robatala, knowing very well that we shall have everything that we ask. Makatelebo, that is faith. That is faith. That is faith. No robobobobo. Sebe ketele. Manda hakala. Panduri mo solote. Piketele mole. Sapri dele bekere mante. Bisele brokoriana haste. Hokoriando halamari kere stoli brosa. Silibranda ha kuli brosa. Kindo ho stayando prisu. Vise kando hoye. Mabarindo hoko. Mibri salahanti ko silibrando ros. Prisu reilande rosa. Riba raba. Pao do holy ghost. See, the presence is already here. The power of God is here. Just receive the anointing. Receive it. Receive it. Thank you, Lord. The power of God is here. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. I decree and I declare that you're not a slave, you're a son, an heir. You carry a portion. He maintains your lot. The Bible says that the Lord is my portion and he maintains my Lord. I decree and declare that you have everything that pertains to life and godliness. There is no reason for you to be afraid. There is no reason for you to weep and cry. It is done in Christ. It is finished. For who saw the Son set free is free indeed. For all things in Christ are here and the amen to the glory of the Father. You shine brighter in the presence of God. I decree and declare that every word you've spoken to the heavenlies, the heavenlies have heard and they've responded by the provisions of God. Father, we thank you. We have access. Everything we ask, we receive. We believe that you're working and have worked and will continue to work in our life in jesus mighty name the message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero ministries international for more information contact us on telephone number 
1-800-242-4291 or email us at funerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Venero. Venero, make manifest. Thank you.